about a couple stories that are kind of fresh right now. You know what, what's going on here with Sammy Guevara and Andrade? You following this? Oh yeah, we followed it all day over on the site. I mean, it reads to me. It reads like two guys that don't like each other, and another issue has been you know ignited in the locker room. But you have Conan here who probably know a ton better than me. Like, what's? I don't think on? he does. I don't I, think Conan. Did you mean, hear about any of this? With no, I, I, I didn't hear about it. I w- here's the thing, uh, Nick. I was in the doctor's uh, office this morning, the whole morning. And then Joe goes, oh, did you hear about Andrade and Sammy Guevara? And I go, no. And then I didn't have time to read it because I had to jump on a call with Marvel. And, um, and then just as I was on the call with them, I get a notification, which you guys probably just saw a few minutes ago, where Sammy's like, hey, you, f- yeah. you know, you never said that to my face you know you're lucky you have a job because you i don't know the whole thing but you can read it now joe said you're yeah he said you're a pity hire yeah yeah so that that's gotten out of hand you know bro the locker room is just out of i mean you know you would think that the locker room would be more in order after they had the big meeting after the punk stuff and and after the fight and the thing that and and bro it's just it's this is not a good look for tony it well, just my- makes it look like you do not have your house in order. You know, you got guys on social media beef with beef with their serious like bro, like like I would think those two are gonna fight when they see each other. That's what you it know? sounds like. Do you wanna hear the ba- do you wanna hear the back like- and- do you wanna hear the back and forth? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, so well, let's hear everything. I don't know anything. Yeah. I haven't yeah, read anything. Tell you right I don't so know there- anything. So there so was pretend uh- that the fans some fans don't know anything either, Joe. If something else happened before this, who started this? Andrade yeah, went ahead. on a podcast, and t- t- yeah, right. And we're going to talk about the AAA stuff too, Cody. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like you know, yeah. so Friday, went on a podcast and spoke his mind about tons of stuff. Good, I'll yeah. speak my mind like, too. Like you, you came like, to the right person because if there's right. one that don't won't back down from anybody in this industry, it's me. So with right. the Guevara okay. stuff, Andrade did this podcast, and it's reported that he had a com- he, he reported he had a com- confrontation with Sammy Guevara backstage after Guevara cried about Andrade hitting him too hard. Andrade said he settled it with words, and it didn't amount to anything. Reminded Sammy it's just wrestling, and that if Andrade hits you hard, you hit him hard back. So Sammy tweeted, "You are a jobber, a favor hire. Be grateful." <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, Andrade replied, "I said it to your face. If you had a problem with me, and you said nothing, I won't beat your ass because I'm a professional. Don't be scared." When I say something, I name names that I'm not scared to get fired. And Sammy responded, you didn't say to me, you liar, but here's some truth, you ungrateful p-. You would be jobless if it wasn't for your dad-in-law. Are you really mad at me, or are you mad at yourself for failing to get over for a second time? Just go back to WWE like we all know you want to do and f*** off. And Andrade replied, okay, I'm a liar. See you on Wednesday. I'll tell you to your face again, and nothing nothing you say that you do not have any problem. So that's... Well, then, then Sammy makes another comment, too. Oh, he did? Sammy had another tweet. Uh, like a short one, basically you're a, you know, basically said you're a pity hire, you know. Oh, that's what I said. Okay. Yeah, that's what started it uh, after the yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, that bro, that locker room is just it's very toxic right now. You know. Now, then, well, Nick, I, what are you hearing? Well, I don't. I mean, I haven't really had a chance to to dig too much into this today, but like I will say that you know it does sound like there were some people that maybe wanted to try to leave AEW, and there's this reported mandate that tony khan put out where it's like we're not releasing anybody anymore from their contracts and uh if you were somebody who wanted to leave (laughs) and are being told i can't leave uh this this kind of feels like how somebody would act in that situation i mean the guys out there saying i don't care if i get fired i mean are you going to show up and put your you know bare feet in the squishy machine uh i i don't know if that's use them you know well let me tell you because we got a minute and a half backstage segment oh he's got a well yeah because we, we got a letter on this yesterday, and this was an idea I thought of just yesterday. So my whole thing is if you have a contract, you know, like if you got a contract at a gym or, you know, a mortgage of your house, you just can't decide, oh, I don't want to pay anymore. You know, a deal is a deal. And I think that Tony doesn't want to let people go because it would make the company look bad. It might open up the floodgates and a lot of people might leave. That's what I think. Um, now... I also want to say this is what I would do, and this is kind of a novel approach, Nick, and see what you think. I think that if talent really wants to get out bad enough, they can either buy their contract out, they can have the company that wants them buy their contract out, like Gabe Spokolsky used to do. I don't know if you know about him, what he, how he used to sign talent, and then if you wanted them, he would sell them to you. Well, because he did that to me in Lucha Underground. And um, uh, uh, Or here's a novel approach. Why don't you do what you do in NBA and football? 
Malachi Black doesn't want to be in, in AEW, and let's say, just to say a name, Braun Strowman doesn't want to be in WWE, you make a trade. That way you get some sort of return on your investment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm about it. Uh, but you're talking about empowering the workers, Conan, and I think you know that's never going to happen in this environment right, right now. You know, it's yeah. it, you know, and that's unfortunate, right? Because uh, as much as the business is changing in a lot of ways, a lot of the old Vince McMahon uh, tendencies, booking—I hate to say carny booking tendencies—like those lessons seem to be getting passed on, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, you would hope that a, a newer, more progressive kind of regime or regimes would be open to kind of reforming in those ways. But I don't know how you guys feel. I'm not getting the, the vibe that that's that's on the table. I think it's all just wishful thinking. Yeah. Not let me let's, well, let's let me let let's, me also tell you what I think Tony needs to do. There's a lot of massive egos in that locker room and he just need to get rid of them. Because when I took over Triple A again, my biggest problem is I had to treat a guy. I had to get rid of the guys that were on drugs. Because they were intoxicating other people, especially the younger talent. I had to get rid of all the divas because they were really f***ing up my dressing room. I got rid of all the problematic people in the dressing room. And, bro, I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect because nothing's perfect. But the com- I've been in that promotion for 20 years. And I've been in many, 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 many dressing rooms. And chemistry is so important. And the chemistry right now, the rapport, the camaraderie amongst my workers is really good because I took out all the sh- and I think he needs to do that, bro. And so like I had, I had gotten some calls from people in AEW because I said on the show, I had gone to the St. Louis show when they were in St. Louis and uh, a lot of people came up to me and they told me, man, this place, they were complaining. And I went on the podcast and I talked about it and I had some, some of the wrestlers call me and go, Hey, that's not cool to come into our dressing room. And, you know, say those things. And I heard Tony wasn't too pleased either. And I thought to myself, you know, in all fairness, if somebody came to my dress room and did that, I'd kick him the fuck out too. So then Tony's been very cool to me and I should have just told him, you know, but I was kind of warning him, bro, about to explode in your locker room and you're not, I don't think you know, and it has, and I was yeah, right. You, you were very continued. prophetic. He, he was yeah. mad at you about that, but like you, you here we are. Like what five, five and weeks later? And it's like here's it, another it blew, thing. It totally I told Dorian and I told Tony, bro. I'm opinionated. I'm going to speak what I feel. I'm not going to people. Like I don't go around and go, oh, this was a great show. This was a great match. If it wasn't good, I'm kind of like Dana White or Charles Barkley. I'm like, this was not a good match, and I will call wrestlers out. This was not a good show. Why lie to people? You know, yeah. you lose all your credibility with them. So when the show isn't good, that's why when people, you know, when, when the show isn't good or the match isn't good or there isn't a good performance, I will bury it. And if it's good, I will put you over like, a, you well, know, just like we- what, just like when we do our reviews, like we review AEW, we review Raw and a lot of people, oh, you guys hate this and we hate that. No, we don't. We just put over what we like, like the, all the blood, like, and all the, all the goofy that we don't like, we bury it, point blank. 